Hello my friends, take a look at the outcome of this beautiful open cut pour. Look at all these cells and these gorgeous lines and flows. If you are interested in seeing how this painting came to be, that's what we're going to be showing in this video. So look at how beautiful this is. I know you're going to love watching the creation of this amazing painting. I could not be more pleased with these results. And I know that you're going to love seeing it too. So I have put some of my colors on the edges of this canvas so that I have really excellent coverage. You know, it's just so annoying if the color goes thin on those edges and that annoying pesty white pops through where you don't want it to be, right? So sometimes if I'm using a lot of colors, I will put a bunch of them on the edges like that. So I was showing you the consistency of my painting. That's one of those Dick Blick uh, neon violet, I think that color was. One of the ones that Sarah Mack likes a lot. This is a custom shade. In fact, all of these paints are left over from, oh my goodness, if I were to tell you, these are actually, these have been in storage since June, or it might have even been late May when I did that flower child painting for the, uh, what was it? It was the flower child collaboration, right? <laughs> So I have had these paintings in storage all of this time. Now, I'm going to make a video on how to keep your paints going for that long of a period of time because we're talking, this was in November, so from late May or early June till, what, November of the same year. That's a lot of months, my friend. And uh, how did I do it? How did I keep my paints going that long so that I could then use them when the time struck? Well, I will cover that in an upcoming video. Meanwhile, uh, most of these colors are custom, really. Uh, some of it might have been leftover paint drippings. Others were just really leftover paints from that particular painting. So I really couldn't tell you what the colors exactly are. But uh, like I often say, you, you could see me there. I was just thinning that down with uh, some water. That's uh, one of the ways that I will just add a little bit of water is either with a spray bottle or one of those little squirt bottles. Like the kind that a lot of people use for... Dutch pours. I, I use either of those to put water in in small amounts. You can also use a little medicine dropper, but it's a good it's a good idea to have a way to put water in in small amounts so that you don't accidentally pour too much in. Have you ever had that happen where you're trying to be really careful pouring from a cup or a bottle and then whoops you just get too much and then your paint's too thin right and then what do you do it's kind of a little more challenging to fix that than it is just to be able to control the amounts of water that you put in so i want to have a lot of really nice dark colors coming through this especially in veins so that's why i'm putting on a dark color as my pillow all right and I really want some blues to come through in that base but that initial pillow was a very concocted dark sort of purple right okay and here's a beautiful aqua color just pouring that in oh i do like open pores you know i'm kind of silly my friends because i have a few paintings in my house on the wall and they're not only the ones that i enjoy the most out of all of the paintings that i've done but they're also the paintings that other people have given me the most compliments on overall. I'm not saying there aren't other techniques I get a lot of compliments on. There are. I have done wrecked ring pours that have been some people's favorites. I've done Dutch pours that have been some people's favorites. But I have to tell you, I get so much attention on these paintings. And you know what the technique is that I did on them? It's an open cut pour, but I did these so long ago. You know, back before I even was experimenting probably with Dutch pours and certainly with ring pours and rect ring pours. And I guess I just ended up thinking that open cut pours are just, you know, like 
the, I don't know, like the elementary type of technique, like something that came soon after flip cups, right? I mean, a lot of people don't even really do flip cups anymore, but that was all that fluid artists pretty much did back in the beginning. All right, now you see I'm just layering color after color and being very careful the order in which I layer so that I don't get pesty mud. <laughs> all right, so... Um, it just occurred to me one day, it's like I, I kind of noticed it, but it just wasn't triggering over in my mind. You know, why am I not doing more open cut pores? It, I guess it's because it seems to me anyway, or at least I've made up by what I've seen people doing for the last few years and what I've not really seen them doing during that time. Seems like open cut pores have pretty much gone by the wayside for the most part, at least, right? So I guess wanting to stay up with the trend I've just been doing other techniques, but you know, at the end of the day, I really love these um, these paintings that I have. So I started thinking, I should just definitely do more open cut pours because I get really pretty good results a lot of the time with them. So why not go to a technique that I've had really great success with? I mean, that seems quite logical, doesn't it? Right. Okay, look at these beautiful lines that are coming forth and look, I'm just dragging that cup through some of them to make some nice beautiful effects. Look at that. Look at those results. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's beautiful. In a few moments, I'm going to show you a close up of this puddle, but we're not quite there yet. Wait till you see what this puddle looks like close up. Plus in a few moments, some of those cells are going to develop just a little bit more and it's going to be rather interesting to look at this close up. Yeah. All right. So yes, my friends, I've decided that I'm going to do more open cut pours. I'm also going to be doing more Dutch pours again. I started my channel with Dutch pours and I've done some here and there along the way. And, you know, you know, I sometimes have flops with those too, but you know, I sometimes have flops with really any technique, even open cut pours. In fact, I did a painting after this one and it's another open cut pour using some more of these same leftovers. And it did not come out as nice, but you know what? It's it's actually a beautiful, beautiful background for one of my goddesses because part of it really did come out very nice, but just part of it really wasn't that great in the end. And so I'm going to be showing you very soon a goddess that I'm turning it into. Speaking of goddesses. Okay, now if you were watching last week, I showed a beautiful Dutch boar, but I did mention at the end of that video that I did not remember to level that painting. I also think it's one of my paints was giving me a bit of a different run for my money. I tried a new paint. <laughs> I'll talk about that more in the future, but I think that might have been part of the problem. But anyway, it just didn't dry well, but I kept trying to save it as it was moving around as it was trying to dry. Oh, look at these cells developing now. And of course, I will be showing you a close up like I promised just up ahead. But look, first I'm adding some color around here so that I can I can move this puddle around and stretch it out very nicely without that beautiful paint and composition that's there right now folding over on itself. We sure don't want that, do we now? No, 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 no. So always remember that, my friends. Always remember that and make sure you have a flow extender so that your pores, your puddles will open up beautifully. Here we are at that close-up. Look at these beautiful cells that are already popping forth. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh yes, I have a good feeling about this one is of course what I was thinking as I was doing it at the time and watching it. This of course is a voiceover. <laughs> All right. And so now I'm going to be just opening this up as carefully as I can, right? Because I want to preserve all this luscious beauty. Look at this, my friends. This has a lot of promise. Of course, opening up a pour, you never know what's going to happen. And sometimes it doesn't go our way. But right now this is looking very promising and I'm so excited about it. So look at how slowly I am tilting this. This is real time. I have not changed the footage speed on this.
I want to remind you that we are on a premiere train, especially if you're here at the time of the premiere, then yes, it is our Tuesday evening premiere. Now, officially, this train was called Choo Choo Tuesday. It was kind of a, just a toss out of a name idea and I kind of ran with it. We have sometimes talked about renaming the train, but so far we've not really done a whole bunch of brainstorming toward that. But we might change the name of it in the near future, but you know, it officially was started as Choo Choo Tuesday. And that was in the beginning of this video. My original or one of my original or parts of my originals spliced together openings that I used to actually put on my Tuesday night videos and then I kind of dropped that after a while but um oh look at how beautiful that is opening up look at that my friends Ooh, that is quite stunning but yes back to the train so I start the train that's what I've been doing lately sometimes we do change the order in which we do appear but lately I have been opening the train and then Joanne of Joanne Ralston Art is coming after me and then Lori of Lori Houston Art Nate of Nate Bright Art after Lori and about once a month, Julie E. joins Nate for their own collaboration. And so for this evening, Julie will also be tagging along with us um, on the other side of Nate. So make sure that you stick around and check Julie's video out as well at her beautiful channel. And we'll be directing you to everyone's videos as we move along together video to video as we're here in the live premieres now of course if you are watching on the replay my friend then go ahead and check in the description below and i'll have links to everyone's videos down there so you'll be able to follow along even if it's after the fact and i recommend that you do because we all present very unique and different techniques within our fluid art and i just know you're gonna love everything you see from each of us so make sure you check them out and really enjoy our beautiful train ride, even if you're enjoying it at a later time. Now look at all this gorgeous negative space. Now that was definitely in my plan. Now I know you can't always control everything that happens in a fluid art painting, but one thing I really like to have take place in my open cut pores is I like to have veins of a specific type of color. I usually like it to be a dark color, a dark blue. In this case, I was using all leftover paints and I did have a fair bit of that very dark purple and not as much of dark, dark blue. So I included that dark purple within the mix of this and I really like how it came out. I really like the addition of both those dark colors. <laughs> these beautiful cells. Look at this beautiful outlay. This is gorgeous. Can you believe this? I was just astounded. And honestly, this is the first time I've done an open cut pour where I got an immediate result this quickly. That was beautiful. In the past, I've actually had to keep going at it a few times, my friends. And let me know if you can relate to that. Or as Angie Mason would say, keep pouring till you're soaring. Well, some paintings I've had to keep pouring quite a lot. And my previous open cut pours were definitely in that category. But this... I was prepared for three times a charm type of a style thing here because that's what I've kind of gone through in the past. Well, at least I think it might have only been three. Perhaps it was more. But in this case, look, I was prepared for more and this could not be more beautiful. I am so pleased with how this turned out. Just look at how gorgeous this is, my friends. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So there I'm picking up just some paint drippings and I'm going to be just touching up corners, making sure all the sides are covered well 
all right? If you're new to fluid art, uh, you'll see some artists doing this, and maybe you won't always see some artists doing this, but the reason for this is because back in the day when fluid art was all flip cups for the most part, everybody tilted off the edges and everyone pretty much put enough paint on the canvas that it pretty much just covered the canvas. No one really had figured out in those early days to use extra paint to maybe stop tilting at certain points once you really like the outcome that's on a canvas already. And it was kind of like this really hit or miss thing, but a lot of silicone usually was in the mix and the cells that it would usually give people was what kind of made the painting. So a lot of times, if, as long as you got that cell reactivity, the painting oftentimes would come out really pretty. I was never really getting those cells, so I was having trouble. And that's actually why I quit fluid art painting way back in the day till I stumbled upon Sarah Mack's channel, but quite by accident, because I'd already quit by then. But that's another story, and I've told it before, and who knows, I may tell it again, but not here tonight. So another way to go about handling the paint, my friends, if you don't know this already, is that you don't over tilt to where it comes all the way off to those very corners, because by the time you get the paint to cover the corners from a tilt, you're really radically changing the face of the canvas itself. And a lot of times that takes something that was already beautiful into something that looks a lot less beautiful. So eventually some people started figuring out like, hey, if I just drizzle paint on these corners and leave the surface to where it looks good and stop tilting at that point, then I can end up with a gorgeous painting and then get those corners covered by drizzling the paint on after the fact. Of course, you don't have that problem in a Dutch pour typically because you're blowing the paint across the canvas or spreading it out with a, a spatula or something like that. But anyway, look at this, my friends. Could this not be more gorgeous? Thank you for being here with us. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Thumbs up, if you will. I enjoyed having you here. I'll enjoy seeing you back again soon. And make sure you check out everyone on the train. See you again soon. Bye.